Hello, welcome to my presentation, the latest, uh, and this one specifically directs uh, to the district offices. So this presentation is how to identify and select schools for the DTLS program. Now, uh, it's very important from onset that uh, we understand the project or the program at large. Uh, this particular program is targeted at improving uh, the, the library services and also the education delivery. Uh, in short, we would actually say that uh, we are introducing a new alternative way in terms of education delivery uh, away from the mainstream. Now, uh, <clears throat> before I go into the actual presentation, I would want to mention here that uh, uh, it is just important for the, us to understand that our primary contact at district level is the district education board secretary, who of course we know that uh, their office is very busy uh, running so many schools is not a, a actually very simple job. So they will actually appoint or second the person from within their uh, structures who would actually work with them so that uh, together they can actually make a team at district level which will definitely uh, work effectively and ensure that the program is implemented success. We are happy so far because we have seen the outcome and the responses that have, that have come through and uh, there are just a few obviously we understand that not everyone acts at the same time because people are, are busy with uh, a lot of things depending on the district however i want to mention that uh, from onset we need to know that uh, the success of this project is dependent on the district teams and the school teams uh, as I think we have done our level based in planning this particular project, we've pushed it to the level where the minister has endorsed it, and now we have um, uh, the ministry that are hosting through the Zambia Library Service. So uh, to us, we have really worked so much, and as we come down to the district, we really want total um, uh, 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 success because obviously uh, this is a different project it has never happened before but we are here to make sure that it happens for the betterment of everyone else in the district especially those that uh, really need to uh, upgrade those that need to learn those that need to improve their lives and those that need to fight over at the end of the day so without further I do, I want to uh, go into the presentation now. So, <clears throat> first and foremost, I want to start by saying that uh, this particular presentation is based on the activity which we are calling the Beneficiary Mapping Activity, which is an act of establishing the beneficiary levels I think we have the direct beneficiaries and the indirect beneficiaries. So this is actually the act. Obviously, we have the depths going down to a mayor learner, and all these are actually beneficiaries. But then, in order for us to be able to work effectively, we also have what we call the gatekeepers. These are people that are going to work with us to be able to support the very beneficiaries that we have so this activity is uh, probably trying to see how best we select the schools of course that uh, meet our criteria or what we are talking about here so we can actually proceed first and foremost in terms of criteria for selecting schools we are talking about the school uh, should have adequate infrastructure or at least uh, at the very least a space that is free for the installation of computers then we have also located the school should be located in an area where there is internet 
access in terms of uh, provision and uh, uh, we are actually free to select from the best that is the, with the three providers that we have MTN, Zamtel and the Airtel. The school also should be able to identify one administrator and three teachers who are willing to be responded to work on the program as gatekeepers. Now, these people are people that would actually take care of the knowledge center and the self-learning, whatever. We know very well that these people are very busy. But um, we would just want to make sure that uh, it works effectively and we work with them in a way that would actually make see, bring about success. So these people from the onset, I want to indicate in this presentation that um, the gatekeepers are actually people that will access, control, and ensure they give support to communities by way of training them in basic computing skills, which are more practical and cannot be learned online. And also there will be the ones that will be preparing these individuals to be able to study online so that they give them the total support they need in order for them to be able to study effectively using digital technology. So these the, uh, gatekeepers will be actually given an opportunity to learn or to study. Uh, those with degrees can actually go for a Master's of Arts in Education and Technology. And those with a diploma would actually go for a Bachelor of Science in Computer Studies Education. And uh, because obviously we really need to understand that um, this is a requirement. So the school which fails this cannot actually continue working with the project. <coughs> now, having talked about uh, them, the, the, the teachers and uh, the administrators uh, studying our courses that we've given, we would want to mention here that um, this project does not believe in uh, workshops. Uh, we believe in real, real training that would actually give a lifetime uh, empowerment in terms of skills in digital technology. So the teachers and the administrators will actually be able to build their capacity to use digital technology. And also they will also be uh, the ones that will help the communities because it means that we will have built capacity for the people who will actually train the communities in a way that we feel is good. <clears throat> Now, more benefits of studying, we need to indicate from the onset again that uh, the degree programs are designed to offer high-level digital technology skills that ensure proficiency and personal career growth. So our gatekeepers, and these are the teachers and the administrators that are actually going to be part of this project, so that they actually test and understand how education will be delivered using digital technology because they cannot support others if themselves have not passed through it. So the courses that we have actually brought on board on this project are going to be supported and um, are going to be administered and uh, uh, assessed and certified by Gideon Robert University, a recognized and approved university in Zambia, which obviously provides academic support in form of bachelor's and master's degrees. So any teacher that would actually be able to do this will actually graduate normally with a very powerful qualification that is recognized by the ministry or even just the government. So, we are doing this in order for people to be upgraded in this area. Now, one thing we really need to indicate is that schools or the district office should know from onset again that um, there is no cost in, in implications in this particular thing, meaning the school will have the computers received, other things received, but they will not pay anything. There's no way the school should pay. 
we are actually distributing computers to these schools. However, <clears throat> for the teachers, we cannot completely remove the fees because that would actually be very, very expensive for the university. So what we have actually done is that we have lobbied the university to scrap off tuition fee. And then we leave these teachers to pay for exams every semester, which is probably a certain amount. And then they pay the application fee and then they also pay registration. So there's no tuition. It is actually very, very free learning and 100% online. So a school that is supposed to be selected should be, be willing to have a self-learning space. Uh, this is actually an area where uh, people can actually use internet uh, with a tablet, with a phone and other freely so that they can actually start. <clears throat> the knowledge center, this is the place where they can actually learn from. So these are the rooms that we would actually establish and put computers there, put internet, put a TV there so that people can actually look. Now, I want to indicate from this presentation that there are certain things that will be provided for the fully supported. And there are things that will be provided for the partially supported. But obviously, I need to indicate from here that 100% for fully supported and then 30% for partially supported. But as we go on, the partialists will actually upgrade to fully supported. Um, I think depending on the way they do things and the way the research is actually going to be. In terms of Wi-Fi, we probably need the a school that is situated in an area where there is a strong MTN, Zantia and there to provide internet services <clears throat> and the connectivity is robust enough to be able to facilitate access. However, schools that are not in a place where there is internet, we better just see how best we can discuss with the devs and see how best we can actually help, but uh, obviously they fall off completely. Then the power options, schools that have no power, they are not on the national grid, would definitely be considered. But um, I think the decision is that uh, they have to be schools that have uh, uh, grade 9s and grade 12s in terms of uh, exiting. And then also we are providing the prefabricated uh, buildings where we install solar panels and other things and computers inside. Now, these are not many schools in a particular district. They are very few because we may not have the resources to be able to support men. So that is exactly the, the issue. <clears throat> then the more the better I want to bring to your attention as districts that uh, the more we reach out in terms of numbers, the better for us because that it means we are actually going to gain a lot of traction. Now, what we mean is, we are using the YouTube algorithms here and the Google Sense algorithms, meaning we are using their partnership, the monetization partnership, which obviously earns us money for us to be able to move this project. Much as we are receiving support from Teaching Africa, we also have to prepare in order for us to keep well, the people that are involved, the key players, the Deb's office, the school setting, all these people in this particular arrangement needs to make sure that they are working effectively. And we know very well that in order for people to work well, there has to be some motivation in terms of allowances, travels, workshops, and other things. So we need to actually support all those things. That is basically the, the idea. Okay. Uh, so the more numbers we have, the better because YouTube will pay us, Google will pay us. Community reach, uh, we are saying schools should have an understanding of why we are opening a knowledge center. It is because the community, people who would want to start, who would want to undertake a particular training, would actually walk into the school premises and be able to use the facility. What we have agreed with ministries is that uh, this facility will actually be opening at 7 and closing 
at 21 hours. Now, in a school setting, is the basically going to be different because obviously, in a school setting, we are saying that um, the morning the children will be able to use the facility from morning to somewhere around five, and after five to 21 hours, it is actually the community people that will be using. It. So that is how. But at district level, the library or the knowledge center district level will open at seven and close at 21. So basically, that is how we will want to play uh, things here. The other thing that I want to mention is that um, uh, we need to really understand that uh, this technology that we are bringing is basically going to change a lot of things. A lot of digital um, uh, innovations and other things will actually come in play and the districts will actually be on the beneficiary side or they, they will actually benefit. So that is that. Now, in terms of conclusion for this particular presentation, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to say that the DTOS action is uh, dedicated to advancing both library use and education delivery through innovation and technology. The program insists on increasing the ability of all the stakeholders in order to be more sustainable. Uh, I don't think we have a similar program anywhere, but I want to indicate that it is from Zambia that we have actually started and we are moving to Malawi next from here. So whatever we are learning and any gaps we identify are the ones that we are going to use to polish up things where we are actually going. So at district level, I want to mention here that the Debs is a very key person here. And the person the Debs appoints is also a very key person because we know very well that the Debs is a busy person. So he would actually be the one making decisions at district level. And he is the one that would actually be approving most of the things and all that. So we particularly pay attention to make sure that this particular office is regarded as very, very important. So that is basically the idea. Um, as I end, I want to say that um, uh, there is a lot involved in this program and the failure rate is actually 95 percent the only success rate we have is five percent now what does that mean we know very well that the, this project can actually fail because there's a lot involved uh, already we are talking about the computers that we have actually have seen which are 400 but we need 600 that we have ordered and we have ordered 3100 computers which are actually going to be distributed in schools. So basically, in order for us to be able to achieve whatever we are doing, we basically need to, to ensure that uh, people at those levels, school and the uh, depth levels, are actually connected. It would be nice <clears throat> to know from the way to go that uh, if the district is not really so much pleased and there's a lot of challenges already to be able to do, to indicate so that we can actually choose. Because the way these districts were selected, we use the random selection. So it is basically not because someone knows who, it is because it's just the name popped up. So we are actually going to do that. There are other things that are going to be done, which I feel may not be necessary this time around to indicate. Uh, but in any case, I just want to thank you for considering the DTLS program and how to select schools uh, guide presentation. Uh, I welcome you to more presentations as we go by. And uh, if you have questions, you better ask on the groups that have actually been created. Then we'll be provide support uh, throughout. Uh, thank you very much. Enjoy your day.